Hello friends, in our previous lecture, we have completed uh, two sums for that three columnar cash book. Now again, we are having two more sums for this three columnar and two columnar cash book. Two sums are left, one is of three columnar and one is of two columnar with that NEFT and RTGS transactions. After that, we are completing this sum and as I said yesterday from sum number 9 to 12, that is petty cash book and bank book are not expected in our course at this time, so we have ignored this. So today this chapter will be completed, tomorrow we will start the next chapter that is journal proper. So now we shall do the remaining two sums that is sum number 15 and 16. So friends on page number 189 the sum is given from the following transaction prepare three columnar cash book of Mansi that is 15th question and the 16th question is about two columnar cash book of Sri Bhupendra. Okay? Yeah. Question number 15 3 columnar Cash book of Months Date Particulars here as receipts, receipt number LN, discount allowed in rupees, cash in rupees, bank in rupees. After that, on credit side. Date particulars. Particulars years are payments, voucher number LF, discount received in rupees, cash in rupees, banking. On 1st September 2015, cash balance is 10,000 and bank is overdraft. So we'll start from credit side of bank and then we send on cash. 1952 balance brought forward. This is opening balance. Discount is not an opening balance. Cash 10,000 bank dash. Again on 1915 from credit side. By balance brought forward, opening balance for overdraft of bank that is 5000 rupees. Next, goods of 5000 purchased for cash from cable at 10% rate discount and 2% cash discount. We are purchasing the goods in cash, cash is going out, so credit side. Both discount is given so that calculation must be shown. On 2.9.15 by purchase account. Now friends, 5000 
minus 10% rate discount if we subtract 4500 is the net amount now we are paying the whole amount in cash and discount is also allowed so 2% cash discount means it will be 225 I think 4500 into 2% so it is 90 is not this amount so 4500 and the remaining amount will be 4410 remaining cash 4410 ok so in discount received it is 90 rupees in cash it is 4410 and dash in the bank and this should be shown in bracket on next page Transaction 6, 8000 is received through NEFT and 1900 cash is received from Jyoti in full settlement of 10,000. Now see, total amount is 10,000. From that 8000 and 1900 are received by bank and by cash. So remaining 100 rupees is not received. Why 100 rupees? 8000 plus 1900 is 9900. Remaining 100 rupees is not received. So that will be discount allowed. And both amount are received. So we'll show on the which side. 6, 9, 15, 2, Jyoti account. Discount is 100 rupees. In cash we are getting 9000. In bank we are getting 8000. See, 8000 plus 1900 is 9900. Remaining from 10,100 is the discount allowed to Jyoti. Salary of 500 paid to Vinod through NEFT, 100 paid for rent by cash and bank debited 3 for charge. So we will show on credit side because bank is debiting. So we are paying the salary, bank is the giver of the salary, credit side. Also we are paying the rent by cash, cash is going on credit side and bank is debiting. So we are showing on credit side. So all these transactions will be on credit side on 10, 9, 15 by salary account we are paying the salary through bank of rupees 5 on same day by rent account we are paying the rent through cash rupees 100 also on the same day bank is debiting bank charges so we will credit uh, side by bank charges rupees 3 Goods of 3000 sold to Kashmira Bank for cash. We are selling the goods, cash is coming in, so on debit side. 15, 9, 15, 2, sales account. Now we are selling the goods of rupees 3000 for cash, so in debit side 3000. 5000, sorry, 500 withdrawn for office expense and 350 withdrawn for personal use from the bank now this is very important transaction we are not paying the office expense that is okay but we are withdrawing from the bank so rupees 5000 withdrawn for bank form for, for, for office expense underline that thing and that is a contra transaction and 350 withdrawn for personal use it will not be a contra because that 350 will directly go in our home but that 500 rupees will be received in our business so it will be cash is received and bank is the given so that will be a contra transaction so this transaction is very important we are withdrawing from the bank for office expense okay if we are not paying then it's okay but still we are withdrawing now whenever we are withdrawing from the bank cash is coming in so on debit side in cash column 500 and on credit side in bank column rupees 500 dash in every other column now we will write the date as 20 20 9 15 in LFC here also Twenty nine fifteen in LFC now opposite in the particulars here it is in cash so we will write to bank and here it is in bank so we will write by cash account so friends understand my thing whenever we are withdrawing for office related expense or business related expense it will be a contra transaction 
and also we are withdrawing 350 for personal use from the bank that will not be a contract transaction simply we will show by drawing this account 350 but that 500 we are withdrawing for office expense so it will come in the business so cash will be debited and bank will be credited machine of 3000 purchased and machine installation wages 250 paid now this is also important whenever we are purchasing the goods and any expense is there then we are separately showing an expense but whenever we are purchasing an asset and we are having at some expense that expense will be added not shown separately so we are purchasing the machine and we are paying the expense also both are in cash because nothing is given so 25.950 by machine account now in the bracket you will write 3000 purchase price plus 250 installation expense because this expense is not to be shown separately as we are purchasing the asset we are not showing the whenever we are purchasing the asset the expenses are not shown separately are added to it after keeping cash on hand rupees 1000 the balance is deposited in bank one more sum we have done previously like this we are depositing the money in bank how much we don't know but how after keeping the closing balance as 1000 so one thing here it is to be noted that we are depositing the money in bank so bank is the receiver amount we don't know it's okay bank is the receiver so on debit side in bank column and in credit side in cash column dash in every other columns see this transaction is very important in one more sum also same transaction had come i will say with some in eight sum same thing we have done that after keeping some cash on hand we are depositing the money in bank we are depositing that is a contract transaction so on debit side bank and credit side cash now we will write the date 30, 39.15 in LFC here also 39.15 in LFC now opposite here in bank column we have done so here we will write to cash and here in cash column so here we will write my bank and this amount will be found on lost. But one more thing is given on the last date 39.15 by balance carried forward. This is closing balance. Closing balance of discount cannot be there and it is given for cash 1000. Bank we are not doing now because bank balance is still unknown. Now we will close the account and we can find out that how much money we have deposited in our bank account. So it is 6640. So amount deposited in bank is 6640. If there it is 6640, here also it should be 6640 itself. But don't round, we will find the closing balance now. Now see on debit side, these things are there, and credit side, less things are there. So debit side is more in bank 8600, 14640. Here also I will write 14640. Now I may subtract by making 0, 14,640 minus 5,000 minus 500 minus 3 minus 500 minus 350. So it is 8287. 
so the closing balance of band is also a closing balance itself not the overdraft again i will repeat the sum in 30th transaction they are telling that after keeping cash on hand 1000 means the closing balance of cash is 1000 we are depositing the remaining money in the bank so we are depositing in bank bank is the receiver so on debit side in bank credit side in cash the question then writing the date and putting c in elf then after that here it is in bank so we are writing to cash here it is in cash so we are writing bank we have taken the total of discount allowed received and written here. After that, we have taken the total of cash written here, made it zero, subtracted all thing including 1000, so it is 6640. If in contract transaction it is 640, then here also it will be 6640. Then by closing the account, debit side of bank is more, we have written on that side, and the credit side balance is 8287. So closing balance of bank is again bank balance opening was overdraft. So three columnar cash flow is counted. Now the last sum is remaining that is of two columnar cash flow. Okay, so let's do that sum. Sixteen sum. After that our chapter is completed. Sixteenth one, record the following transactions in two columnar cash book of Sri Bhupinder for April 2016. But which two columns? If you are seeing the first sentence, you can understand bank and cash balance are given. So, cash and bank columnar cash book is there. In other sums, it is clearly given. Here, it is not given. Question number sixteen. Two columna cash book of Sri Bupinder date particulars are receipts. Then receipt number, then LF. Now discount is not required, cash rupees, bank rupees. After that, again, date, particulars here are payments, voucher number. LF cash rupees bank rupees only two columns are cash rupees required. Okay. First April 2016. Opening is cash balance and opening is bank balance, so both will be recorded on debit side. On first April 2016, two balance brought forward it is opening balance. For cash it is fifty five thousand. For bank it is five lakh fifty thousand. Third, 5500 given in donation. We are giving, so cash is going up. So, on credit side, 3, 4, 60. By donation 
account. Five thousand five hundred as cash, nothing. Forty nine thousand five paid to Mahesh through NEFT for his receivables. NEFT charges five bank debited them all. So we will write on credit side. We are paying to Mahesh, so bank is the giver on credit side and bank charges also on the same side. The date is same by Mahesh account on the same day by NEFT charge account. Mahesh is paid by bank 49500. Also, bank is debiting, so we are writing on the credit side NEFT charge 5 rupees. Fifth, Darshan paid 66,000 through NEFT towards his debt. Bank credited the amount. Darshan paid NEFT charge rupees 5. Now, underline whenever we are paying and a charge is levied, then the person who is sending has to pay the charge. See, we are paying to Mahesh, so we are paying the charge. Now, if Darshan is paying the charge, he is the sender. So, he will know the charge. We are uh, nothing with the charges. Charges are only through senders, not through the receiver. So, underline Darshan paid NEFT charge rupees 5 and ignore it because only the senders are availing the charges, not the receivers are availing the charges. Okay. So, we are only receiving the money. So, on the right side, 5, 4, 16, 2, Darshan account. Now Darshan is paying the amount rupees 66,000 through NEFT. But Darshan is only paying the charge. We are only not paying the charge. Bank is crediting, so we are debiting this. Rent of 14,300 paid by cash. We are paying cash goes out so on credit side 6460 by rent account amount 14,300. Dash bank. Bank credited 22,000 for commission. Bank is crediting, so we will debit. 8,462 commission account. Bank is crediting rupees 22,000. So in the bank column, 22,000. Cash purchase 2,75,000. Now, if you are reading this much and if you are writing in cash column, then the sum will be wrong because cash purchase 2,75,000 amount is paid through RTGS and RTGS charge is 30. So, for confusing you, they are telling it is cash purchase, but actually it is bank purchase because we are paying the amount through RTGS. Don't forget, we are it is written cash purchase, but still the amount is paid through RTGS, so it is paid through bank only. It is for confusing you people. So 10, 4, 16. Think and write, okay, by purchase account. And on the same date, by RTGS charge account. Now the purchase is made for 2,75,000 rupees and 5 rupees. So not 5 rupees, 30 rupees is the RTGS. Charge. As you know, about the amount about 2 lakh is paid by RTGS only. So we are doing RTGS, not any FT. 12. Cash sales 385. Amount is received through RTGS. Again, for confusing you, if you are writing this both in cash column, then it will be wrong. This entry will be wrong. And as I said, not all sum will be wrong. Your each each entry will be checked whether you have written in current amount or not. Okay, so now we are selling the goods, we are receiving the money, but not through cash, through bank, because RTGS word is given. Okay. 12, 4, 16, 2, sales account, the amount 3,85,000 rupees. 13. 22,000 paid to Kalpana towards our receivables through NEFT, NEFT charge 5 rupees. Again, we are paying through bank. Bank is the giver. So, on credit side, 13,416 by Kalpana account by NEFT charge account. Both will be in bank. 22,000 and 5 rupees. 
Now again cash sales word is given. Now RTGS is not given. See understand the difference between 12th and 20th transaction. In 12th transaction cash sales is given but RTGS amount is received so we are done in bank. But here simply cash sales is written so we will write in cash flow. In the same way in the 10th transaction cash purchase is given but amount is paid through RTGS. So we have written in bank column. But in 24th only cash purchase is given so we will write in cash column. So you have to see only cash word is given then it is okay in cash column. But if RTGS and EFT words are given then in bank column. So for understanding this sum is very important. Okay, You can understand so much things from these sums. To sales account and sales is done in cash rupees 44,000. Yes. Again on 24, 4, 16 by purchase account and purchase is also done in cash for rupees 27,500. As nothing any FP is given so we are doing like this. Okay, 25th. 49,500 sent for daughter's medical college fees to NEFT and debited amount including 5 for NEFT charge. We are paying daughter's fees so it is personal so it is drawings also we are paying NEFT charge. 25, 4, 16 by drawings account. Don't write daughter fees account. By drawings account and on the same day by NEFT charge account. Now, the amount of daughter's fees is 49,500 and 90 is charging 5 rupees for an gift. Last, bank credited. So, we will debit 33,000 for dividend of life insurance of dividend. And life insurance premium is paid through NEFT. See, there are two transactions. Bank is crediting 33,000, so we will debit. And life insurance premium we are paying, and we are paying to any FT, so it will be credited. But first, bank is debiting, so we will write on debit side 3460 to dividend account. And bank is crediting the dividend in our bank account, so 33,000. Also, on the same day, we are paying the life insurance premium. Now, it is not a insurance premium, it is life insurance premium, so it is drawings. So, again, by drawings account. And we are paying through any FD, so on credit side of bank. Okay, the sum is over. Now as you know in cash always debit is more, 55 and 44 is 99, so 99 on debit and 99 on credit. Buy balance carry forward closing balance on 3460, make 0, write 99,000. Minus 5500, minus 14300, minus 27500. So the balance of cash, closing balance of cash is 51,700. Again, now bank is debit side more only because so much transactions are there. So 5,50,000, 66,000, 22,000, 3,85,000, and 33,000. So 10,56,000. On debit side, it is 10,56,000, which is more. Again, make 0, write 10,56 and triple 0, 10,56,000. Minus 49,500, minus 5 rupees, minus 2,75,000, minus 30 rupees, minus 22,000, minus 5 rupees, minus 49,500, minus 5 rupees, minus 11,000. So, 6,48,000. 955 rupees is the closing balance of bank on both debit is more than the credit. So friends, no discount allowed at this is there. So friends, seventh chapter that is cash book is being completed today. Now tomorrow we will start the eighth chapter that is journal proper. Then eighth, ninth chapter and tenth chapter. Three more chapters for completing our first semester course. And I hope that all are writing that.
their notes properly still 50% are not aware of that but it's up to you i can't do anything for them okay so that's all for today thank you so much